The following story is another true alien abduction mystery. On the 17th of August 1992, two men were driving along the A70 road from Edinburgh to Tarbrax at around 10pm. The driver of the vehicle was Gary Wood, 30-year-old ambulance technician, and his passenger and friend Colin Wright, 25. The pair were heading out of Edinburgh along the A70 as they were delivering a satellite system to their friend who lived about 40 minutes away in Tarbrax, a small village in East Lanarkshire. As the car passed the Huprick Reservoir, about nine miles from their destination, the pair noticed a strange dark object in the sky that did not resemble any aircraft. When they initially spotted the craft, they were driving about 40 miles per hour and there was very little traffic on the road. As the craft moved closer to their car, they could see that it had a rounded underside with a roughly 30 foot diameter disc with a rounded top and the exterior of the craft looked smooth and metallic and it appeared to have no windows. As the craft came closer, the two men became frightened and Gary quickly locked the door and tried to accelerate away from the object, but it proceeded to chase them and was now in front of the car. A silver light shone down in front of the car where they drove into what appeared to be a light mist. A darkness then overcame the men and the next thing Gary remembered was standing outside in the pitch black and could not see anything around him. As he looked around, there was no sign of the road, the car or Colin. All of a sudden, the bright light returned and he was back in the vehicle, struggling to control the car. He looked around and could see that Colin was beside him and he quickly stopped the car. The two men sat quietly for a few minutes and suddenly realised that had just undergone a weird event and the craft had vanished. They continued their journey to Tarbrax filled with anxiety and as they reached their destination they found that their seatbelts were undone. As they were unloading the car, Gary went to knock at the door but nobody answered and continued to knock. Eventually a light turned on and his friend opened the door looking tired and confused. Gary told him that he had the satellite equipment whereupon his friend looked even more bemused. He asked him why it was so late as it was almost 1am. Gary could not believe the time, as he thought it was much earlier. The men entered the house and proceeded to tell their story about the strange craft and the curtain of light the car had driven into. They realised that they'd lost some hours that they could not account for. The following morning, they returned to Edinburgh using an alternative route, using the A71, as they feared a repeat of the previous day. Four years later, in 1996, Gary Wood gave an account of what happened that night on a television show called Mysterious North, alongside a man called Malcolm Robinson who had himself been abducted and was now a paranormal researcher. Gary told his story where on the way to Tarbrax, he and Colin Wright initially encountered a huge object floating about 20 feet above the road and became frightened. As they drove underneath the object, it emitted a shimmering light before everything became black. He believed he was dead before finding himself back in the car alongside his friend and skidding out of control. Over the days that followed their ordeal, both men became extremely tired and suffering from insomnia. When they did eventually sleep, they suffered from horrific nightmares. Gary decided to visit his doctor to seek medical advice about his condition and was given a full examination, but there were no signs of illness or injury. He was sent for an MRI scan. It even had a lumbar puncture to check for serious infection, but all results came back negative. Gary decided to do some research into aerial phenomena, hoping to find answers for what they'd encountered on that night. He decided to send a report to the British UFO Research Association. Gary also got more involved in UFO research and the paranormal. He found an organisation called Strange Phenomena Investigations that was led by Malcolm Robinson, the man he'd previously met during the TV interview. Gary told them about he and his friend's strange encounter with the UFO, where Malcolm Robinson took a personal interest in the case. Robinson suggested hypnotic regression by a hypnotherapist called Helen Walters, and in one of the early sessions, Gary ended the session in tears. As the session continued, more pictures of events began to unfold where both men remembered being in the car after passing through the curtain of light. As the car stopped in the middle of the road, 
six small humanoid creatures surrounded them with three on each side. Gary remembers being in agonising pain as if his stomach was being torn apart before blacking out again. Colin remembered seeing Gary outside of the vehicle surrounded by strange beings. He was laying on some type of stretcher that appeared to be levitating. The stretcher moved towards the craft before everything went blank and all remaining events were confusing images that seemed to jump from one scene to another. Colin remembers walking into the shining craft being led by one of the humanoids and found himself in a circular corridor before entering a room with a corrugated transparent roof. A soft light filtered through the room that was empty apart from a strange curved shaped chair. He was then stripped naked and placed in the chair. He did not resist. He felt intoxicated as the chair reclined. He was subjected to a non-intrusive physical scan and then felt a sharp pain followed by an intense burning sensation when an isram was inserted and then removed from his eye. His next memory was being inside a transparent glass-like container and was held in place by restraints at his feet and ankles. As he looked around, he could make out a number of identical capsules with prisoners unclothed, some male, some female. Between the capsules was a light mist that swirled around like dry ice. Standing in the mist were a different group of humanoids, similar to the others but much taller. They were staring at him with huge eyes and began to move towards his cell. And as they got closer, the glass began to frost and within seconds was completely opaque. At this stage, Colin began to cry as he had no idea what was happening, where he was and what those things were. An angular device suddenly entered the cell and rose from the floor and spread out in front of him were two flashing red lights. The ends of the device began to move up and down while circling around and appeared to be scanning him. Gary Wood described laying naked on the table and being restrained. The room was similar to that which Colin earlier described. However, this room had a large lens in the centre of the room which had extraordinary properties. It would twist and fold in in itself, in an infinite loop. Gary's attention was then drawn to a long, thin, semi-translucent arm over his chest that was lowered slowly onto his shoulder. While still in his hypnotic state, he began to scream and his body convulsed and he fell to the floor. His next memory was standing in a large empty room with a hole open in the floor in front of him. It was filled with a viscous gel-like liquid with a column raised from the metallic floor. A segment of the column extended and rose further from the main body until it reached eye level with Gary. At the tip of the column were two glowing red dots before Gary could hear something mechanical spinning up like an electric motor. Then the pull at his feet began to vibrate where a frail looking tall thin creature emerged and Gary could sense it was in a great deal of pain. The emaciated looking creature had thin translucent skin held over an alien skeleton. Gary later learned that the pull was a type of medical treatment for the beings who struggle with the strength of earth gravity and atmospheric pressure. Gary then followed the risen creature as it led him to another large room containing many other beings. The majority of the beings in the room were tall pale grey creatures but there were some who looked human and one he described as a small middle aged man dressed in a black business suit. The others were the smaller grey creatures that were outside the car. Some were small beings with odd shaped heart faces covered with markings reminiscent of Native American tribal markings. As Gary thought to himself why they were doing this, his question was answered in his mind. He said, in many ways, your kind are more advanced than us, and our existence is much like your own, where we do have concerns and needs. As the creature was talking, Gary could feel the telepathic link between them, and could see fragments of another life within his mind and the life of the creature. The link seemed to pass information between them. It was from this that Gary was able to gain a better understanding of what the being had said. It said the evolution and development of our species, psychologically and physically, had posed a threat to the other life forms in the universe. Humanity and its rapid development were seen as too immature to handle the responsibility of the power we had created. In another session, Gary recalled being underground and remembers sitting in a large cave-like chamber with multiple tunnels leading off in every direction. 
in the cave was another craft, similar to the one it's seen on the road. Beneath the craft were three of the tall, thin beings, and at their feet was a young naked woman curled into the fetal position. She had been crying and was in a state of distress. He felt she was another abductee and was also a prisoner of the beings and believes he could identify her if they met up again. After the last regression made by the two men, Helen Walters, the hypnotist, believed that after the many sessions of aggressive therapy, she truly believed what the men had said and that they were sincere. She really believed that they had been abducted by an alien species that night. Gary later became involved in the Scottish paranormal scene and continued to study UFOs and abductions and created his own research group and worked with the Scottish paranormal author Ron Halliday. However, his friend Colin Wright wanted nothing to do with the UFOs or the supernatural. 